Hello, hi. Okay, so this is going to be a review of angles and degrees, and we're also going to talk about portions of angles or portions of degrees, I guess. Um, okay, so let's just start from the beginning. So how do we technically even make an angle? So I'm, I'm talking like geometry here. So you start with two points, A and B, and if you connect them, that makes a line segment. Again, this is geometry. And if you were to take that line segment and and just extend it like you see here, so now this becomes a ray and you see how I've just extended it for forever. This is a ray. So this is actually the first part of an angle. And if you connect two rays, that's what technically from a mathematical standpoint makes an angle. Okay. Um, some terminology. This is the vertex, this, this point here where the two rays are connected. These are considered to be the sides of an angle. And angles have measure. And this happens when we rotate a ray, which is what we call the initial side, to another side, which is called the terminal side. So let me just show you what that looks like. Got my ray. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing it like this. And so this side here, this starting ray, this is the initial side. I swing it out and then I get this other ray. And so this is what's known as the terminal side. So um, that that is what makes an angle. Woohoo. All right. So counterclockwise rotation gives an angle with positive measure. Clockwise rotation gives an angle with negative measure. So just to be clear about what I mean here. So counterclockwise would mean that I'm going this way. And so then I get, okay, so there's my other ray. So this is the positive measure. And then just to be really clear, clockwise, so I swing this way. There's my other ray. This will give me a angle with negative measure. Okay, so now let's talk about the complete rotation of a ray. So what I mean is I'm gonna take this ray and I'm just gonna swing it all the way around like this. And so you could kind of imagine like as we're going around, you've got all these rays kind of coming out and you could already see, you know, the, the picture that this creates. So this creates a circle and a circle is 360 degrees. So I think sometimes I, I hear questions like, ah, oh, who even thought of that? You know, who, who thought of this idea? And the, the thing about math is that a lot of times when you hear things like this, these are really old ideas. So this is 4,000 year old math, actually, like this 360 degree thing. The Babylonians came up with the 360 degrees and people think that it, it may have been to approximate the number of days in a year. There's 365 days in a year, so 360 degrees, it's pretty good. The thing about 360 is that it's easier to do calculations with. So yeah, we like that number and uh, I guess we've just always uh, used it ever since. So there you go, there's some uh, party, party trivia for you to make you more popular at parties. Okay, so anyways, so this is 360. So what this means then is one degree, what that means is it's one 360th of a complete rotation. So degrees have an actual meaning. They are tied to circles and one degree represents one 360th of that rotation. So there's there's an actual rooted meaning. I think a lot of times if you were to ask somebody, what does a degree mean? They, they probably couldn't come up with a definition, but now you know. All right, so let's discuss some angle types. First things first, an acute angle. So an acute angle that is, is an angle that is between zero and 90 degrees, it does not include 90. And then a right angle is an angle that is exactly 90 degrees, and it's usually denoted with this symbol. So you might remember that from geometry. An obtuse angle is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, so any angle between those two. And then a straight angle is exactly 180 degrees. So that it would just be, it would look like a line. Okay. Um, let's talk about some other types of angles. So complementary angles, these occur when the sum of two angles is 90 degrees. So two angles will be complementary to one another. And two angles can also be supplementary to one another. So this occurs when the sum of two angles is 180 degrees. So you could have some questions about this. So something like find the complement and the supplement of a 55 degree angle. So to do that, um, first you have to just think about the complement. So the complement needs to sum up to 90. So if I know that one angle is 55 degrees, I just take 90 degrees and subtract 55 degrees to get 35 degrees. 
So that would be the complement of 55 degrees. And then for the supplement, so now I just start with 180 and I subtract off the 55 and I get 125. So the supplement would be 125 degrees. So that's how you approach those types of problems. And then um, I have a few other questions here that are, are kind of playing on that idea of complements and supplements. So you could be given just like these two angles like we see here, and you're just asked to find the marked angles. So this angle, when I look at it, because it's got this symbol here, I know that it's a 90 degree angle, and then this is a straight line, so this is a straight angle, so this is 180 degrees. Okay, so let's start, let's start with this one here, just how would you work with this? So I see these two angles here. So what I can do then is I can just say that if I add them up, they should equal 90, and then I can just solve this like, you know, a, a typical algebra problem. So I'd have 5x is 90, and then I'd get the x is 18 degrees. Now, make sure that you actually fill in the angle measure here. So for this first angle over here, I'd have 2x, so now it's going to be 2 times 18, so this would be 36 degrees. And then for this other one, 3x, this becomes 3 times 18, so it's 54 degrees. So there are my two angles in, in that instance. And then for the other one, so now I'm going to take the 6x and the 3x, and those have to equal 180. Same idea. So now I've got 9x is 180. And so my x in this case is 20 degrees. And then I just have to fill in the two angles. So the first one, I'm going to have 3 times 20 is 60, like we see here. And then for the second one, I have 6 times 20 is 120 degrees. And so then you could also do like a quick just sanity check with this. And you can add these up. These will definitely add to 90. These will definitely add to 180. So I can see that this is all good. Okay, so feel free to pause if you know the, the explanation is going a little quick. Um, so I'm kind of just going through the ideas here to, to save on time. So always feel free to pause the video, by the way, if you need some extra time to write anything down. Okay, so now let's talk about how do we notate angle measure. So to notate that, we've got an M and then, you know, whatever angle we're talking about. So I would read this as the measure of angle A. So you will see this from time to time as you move along with working with angles. And then what do you want to do or what do you do if you want to measure a portion of an angle? Or maybe more specifically, you measure an angle and the degrees aren't like perfect. So a degree can actually be separated into minutes and or seconds. So let's talk about that. So we can go from degrees to minutes to seconds. There's a conversion here. So one minute, which is denoted as like this one and like an apostrophe or this hash mark, this is one sixtieth of a degree. The way I think is better to think about this is 60 minutes in one degree. I think this is the much better way to think about this and I'll show you why in a few minutes. And then one second, so notice is one with double hash marks here. This is one sixtieth of a minute or one 360th of a degree. Again, I think that this is the, the, the better way to think about this. So 60 seconds in one minute and 3,600 seconds in one degree. Now I have another video where I'll actually talk about clocks. Um, this doesn't totally relate to clocks, although it, I mean, it feels like it kind of does. Um, but I have another video where I do talk about angle measures with clocks and they're like two separate things. So that can be a little, a little crazy. Um, okay. So Let's just talk about how to do these conversions. So here is how you would see, so a degree with minutes and seconds. And so what if I didn't want the minutes and seconds? Maybe I just wanted a decimal version of this. Um, so to do that, what you would do is you would convert the minutes and the seconds each to their respective degrees. So to do that, um, I'm going to start by, I'm going to start with the minutes and I'm going to remember that 60 minutes is one degree and we're going to use a lot of dimensional analysis to do this. So I'll show you like how, how that works in a moment. Okay. So like I said, we're starting with the minutes. So I'm going to take the minutes and I'm going to multiply by using this conversion rate. This is really a conversion rate. And I want you just to notice how I've set this up. So I've got this so that the minutes are on top here. And then when I set up the conversion, the minutes are in the bottom here. This is what's known as dimensional analysis. And by doing this, you see that the, the minute cancels out. So maybe I'll just, um, I'll just show you guys what I mean. So the minutes, those units like cancel out. That's the way you want to set up your conversion because then what you're left with is just degrees. So if I multiply these things together, what I'm left with is 
um, 12 over 60 degrees. That's what I'm left with. So that's kind of the, the point of that. And then you can just finish the division. So you get 0.2 degrees. Okay. Um, so now I need to go from seconds and I need to get the seconds to the degrees. So that's where I need to use the other conversion. So this is seconds to degrees. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take that seven seconds and notice how I've set out the conversion. So I've set it up so that so the seconds are up here and then seconds are down here so that the units drop out. So if I complete this, I will have seven over 3,600, um, and this should have been degrees, sorry, my bad. So this comes out to 0 0.00194 degrees. And so then to finish this, so notice that we had to have this in the nearest thousandth. So we've got to just take that into account. So to get this to the nearest thousandth, that would become 0 0.002. And then just to finish this, all I have to do is I've got 55 degrees and then I add these two things up. So I add this and this. So my answer then is going to be 55.202 degrees. So you can write it as a decimal if you wanted to. Okay, so let's, let's go the other direction. Show how to convert 27.312 degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds to the nearest second. Okay, so in this case, all you have to do is you have to focus on just this decimal part. And we're gonna need all of our conversion rates. I'm just gonna write them all down um, so that we can kind of explore this a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna convert this to minutes. So we're gonna use our minutes to degrees because we're starting with degrees and we wanna go to minutes. So notice how I set this up. I've got 0 0.312 degrees. And so now when I use the conversion, so I've got degrees on top, I want to cancel out degrees. So when I set up this conversion, I put the degrees in the bottom. And once again, that's going to allow the degrees to cancel out. And then I'm just left with minutes. So you always want to think about kind of your dimensions in, in that way. So all I have to do then is multiply 0.312 times 60. And so what I get is 18.72 minutes. So we're part of the way there. Now, we don't want decimals. So now we want to take this decimal and we want to convert this to seconds. So think about what we're dealing with here. Do we need this conversion rate or do we need this conversion rate? We're in minutes and we want to go to seconds. So in reality, we want to get this conversion rate here. So I need to use 0.72 with this conversion rate. And maybe you want to pause for a second just to think about how would you set up the next part of this conversion. So the way that you would do this is you're going to have 0.72. So notice I've got the minutes once again canceling each other out. So I'm just left with seconds. So if I finish this calculation, I get 43.2 seconds. Now, remember that we were asked to round to the nearest second. So if I just round this, I'm going to round down in this case. So this becomes approximately 43 seconds. And so now I've got everything that I need for this. I've got the 27 degrees, I've got the 18 minutes and the 43 seconds. So my final answer, 27 degrees, 18 minutes, 43 seconds. Okay, so now let's just talk about um, a few other things. So we can also do some calculations and I think that this is actually pretty straightforward once you, you kind of know how to read this. Okay, so I'm gonna add 54 degrees and 15 minutes and 15 degrees, 54 minutes and 17 seconds. So the best way to do this actually is to like think back to, you know, um, when you're like in algebra or something like that. So line these up and just sum these up as if they were each their own unique column. So what I mean is add the degrees together, add the minutes together, add the seconds together. After you do that, you have to think for a second about what makes sense. 69 degrees is okay. 69 minutes does not make sense because there's 60 minutes in one degree. So this is what you have to like kind of use your, your noggin to think about. So then you have to convert this into degrees and minutes. So what we get then is 69 minutes actually becomes one degree and nine minutes. So then I just have to adjust this calculation. So I'm going to add this degree to this column and leave the nine minutes alone so that I'm left with 70 degrees, nine minutes and 17 seconds. So that's how you'll approach those. And then if we wanted to go the other direction, so let's say I wanted to subtract, so now I've got 75 degrees minus 25 degrees in 15 minutes. Okay, so same thing, set it up like this. And you'll notice the issue here is that I don't have any minutes to subtract from in this case. So 
When that happens, then you just want to borrow a degree. That's all you have to do. So I'm going to take one degree from the 75 degrees and transfer it into minutes so that I get this. So now this becomes 74 degrees and 60 minutes. So these are totally equivalent, right? But this will allow me then to finish the subtraction. And so then I can just get 49 degrees and, and 45 minutes. And so that's it. And so that covers just kind of some of the, the basics with angles. Um, so I've got some more videos and I've got example videos if you want to see more examples. The whole point of videos like this is to just cover the basic idea. And then I have extra example videos if you feel that you need just to see a couple more. I've got you on that. So make sure to check out my video library. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.